Hey everybody, do you know what time it is? Kerbal Space Program 1.0 time. That's right, Squad is sending the game out the door, out of early access, out of beta, and into the wild onto Steam on the developer's website. So I want to start by giving a big congratulations and kudos to Squad for making a game that I know they've poured their hearts and souls into for so long. And it's awesome. It was awesome in early alpha pre-Steam days. It's still great today. And I'm looking forward to uh, many, many, many more missions going with my friendly Kerbal Knots here. But this video today is going to be more about the new features that are being introduced into 1.0, and there are a lot of them. Some people are a little scared. It's kind of risky to say you're adding so much in instead of just nudging the game out as is into the wild. But I, I have to applaud uh, Squad because this is a lot of features that people have been asking for for quite some time, and they're waiting until the 1.0 to put it in instead of saying 1.1, 1 1.2, 1 1.3. So I don't have an early access like test build or anything to work with, so I'll be going mainly from information that's been given by the developers. But I just want to give you a rundown, especially if you haven't been paying too much attention to Kerbal Space Program lately. So let's get started. First off, there is going to be kind of a lot of changes that will feel a little nuanced for how your ship flies, including overhaul the aerodynamic model. That's very important for things like uh, some types of wings and nose cones, which currently don't have any aerodynamics in them at all and they'll be useful. They're not just dead weight on your ship. Uh, there's also going to be fairings that are introduced, procedural fairings and just regular fairings as well. For those of you who don't know what fairings is, they're very useful for encapsulating parts of your ships uh, before you take them out into orbit instead of having everything kind of dangling off everywhere. And to that end, there's also going to be an introduction of re-entry heat, which is very interesting to me. They'll be including heat shield parts as well, but you don't just have to put deadly re-entry mod on there anymore, although I'm sure putting re-entry heat in the engine is just going to be a boon for a lot of the modders here, which is one thing that's great about Squad and their use of the engine for Kerbal Space Program is that they've left it very open so modders really get to do the work and make the game even more better. Another new feature that they're adding, and this is a biggie, is resources from planets and asteroids. So it's, if you're familiar with like the Cathane mod or anything like that, you can scan planets, you can scan astral bodies for resources and actually make something happen with them. So it's not just like, okay, let's find this and okay, bam, we're cool, or let's just click the science button. Uh, Squad has said that you'll actually be able to do refueling from finding resources and possibly processing and making fuel. So no longer do you have to be stuck on Tylo for, you're gonna be stuck on Tylo, if you can even land there, because I'm not convinced it's possible. But still, resources, one of the things I'm most excited about because it gives you even more reasons to explore the solar system than just the thrill of going. But speaking of things that are better, another introduction, it's a long overdue introduction, is the introduction of female Kerbals. Uh, Valentina was the one that was kind of previewed before, but I think Squad nailed it pretty well. Some people were concerned about what female Kerbals would look like, and they look like they should. They look like Kerbal Knots that just happen to be girls instead of boys, so I guess now we can uh, send everybody, male, man and woman, up into space to explode. Because that's what Kerbal Space Program is all about. Uh, explosions. And sometimes making it onto different planets. So there's also going to be some changes to how thrust works. And those are some things that I don't, I can't really get into too much detail without playing. But air pressure will matter more. Pressure inside the tank will matter a little more. They've tried to adjust fuel flow systems so that there isn't any kind of asymmetric flame out. And I'm curious how that'll work with jet engines as well, because I've had that issue quite a bit. Uh, another thing is that they've added some new parts. I already said the heat shield, there'll be a, a bigger landing gear, which is pretty important for bigger uh, types of space planes or regular planes. Bigger wings as well, and included in the actual uh, hangar where you're building the stuff, there'll also be an engineering report that'll include the delta V of the ship and a pre-flight check-in. I hope that pre-flight check-in means, oh, by the way, your bird's not going to get off the ground and it'll just sink into the ocean next to the space center. Uh, let's see here. Another feature that I'm really excited about, and it's a good quality of life feature, is that you can time warp through Kerbal Space Program. Good luck flying some missions without time warp. But now they've included the ability to time warp to a maneuver node or to apoapsis or to periapsis or to wherever. Because there's been way too many times where I've hit the period button one too many times and I didn't quick save beforehand and kaboom, my ship is suddenly really far away from where it should be. Or now it's escaping carbon or something like that. So time warp change, pretty nice. They've also changed the chase cam, which a lot of people like to use for docking, and changed the docking mode input as well. And I wonder if that's more than just rearranging the key bindings, because I know me and a lot of other people 
kind of switch the key bindings around to make docking a little easier. But I hope it's something that makes docking more accessible because Lord knows docking is very important for a lot of space missions as well. Uh, let's see here. So I already talked about fairings and cargo bay and fairing interior parts will be shielded. It's unconfirmed whether that'll be included with re-entry heat. Although typically with fairings, they detach when you launch it off into space because you're doing something like a satellite. Another thing that's a... Uh, they also mentioned there's going to be a new ability for crew members. Unfortunately, I haven't really been able to track down what that new ability is. I'm sure as soon as this video is published, someone will be like, it's this, you moron. So great. Put it in the comments. That'll be a big help because I'd like to know too, but not just the piloting, not just the engineer. Uh, but another thing that's very important for new players, especially the 1.0, is better tutorials, a new demo, and... I think those are things that are very important because the tutorials and demo are very helpful and a lot of people skip it and go straight to sandbox mode. The more you can do to say keep people from having to go to a wiki page and actually do things in game, the better off you are. And the demo is really nice too because the demo that's currently out for Kerbal Space Program, which feel free to check it out, is from an older build. I believe the demo is still just Kerbin in the Moon and I don't know if that's going to change, but there should be more parts at least. So give you at least a flavor there, but let's see some other part, some other things I've talked about. I'm kind of going from a list that's on the uh, Kerbal Space Program forums here. Um, let's see here. There'll be a new animations for EVA, and maybe more importantly for some people, there'll be new views for IVA mode. So if you want to know if your crew is actually doing science in the science bay or eating snacks, you can check. You can actually going to say, "Oh, by the way, get back to work." I don't know if you can actually click them or not. Uh, but Kerbal's, uh, let's see here, there's new animations for EVA, I already said that. One other thing that's actually pretty important, especially if you've been on the EVE or any high gravity area where you may have screwed yourself here, is Kerbal's will now be able to climb edge without ladders, so you won't necessarily be stuck. Well, I mean, you could be stuck if you land poorly, but something like one little lip of a ship not being able to block your way, Kerbal's will now be able to climb over that, which is actually surprisingly difficult to program, or at least for a novice programmer like me, I just tried to do that myself. But being able to climb over without ladders is very nice. Or being able to walk over a ladder instead of just straight falling off. So another thing that's, uh, I guess will make some people happy, make some people wonder why, is that all engines will have a nickname like a skipper or a mainsail, like the LV-909, one of my favorites, as you've seen probably from my videos. It will be renamed the Terrier. So that'll be helpful, especially when you're talking about players who may not have as much experience, what kind of engines to go for. But... Otherwise, they are including just some changes. I believe they're trying to add a new tier to the Space Center. They put a barn back in the old tier. They've included new contracts as well, including uh, space tourism. And more importantly, especially kind of for when I was trying to play hard as well, they're readjusting, rebalancing the economy. I was doing a playthrough on hard, but what I ended up running into is that it just wasn't as fun. If only because the re rewards were really, really, really low. And I mean, that's that's the point of like, okay, we you got to keep your income low because that's one way to create difficulty. But what it turned into is I had to grind, grind, grind missions, ones that I didn't always want to have to grind. So any sort of fixes to the economy to sort of make things more rewarding, make the um, special task that you can do at the command center, rebalance your programs. I'm looking forward to see what that is. Unfortunately, I don't have a test copy, so I can't say for sure what it's like. But they've adjusted the tech tree. They've included some new European Space Agency flags. Uh, they've included the uh, fact that now Kerbals cost funds to hire from the astronaut complex, so no more uh, Darkest Dungeon style, because Darkest Dungeon obviously came first. But no more just Legion of I will send all the Kerbal nuts out into space with no reputation loss or anything like that. But camera wobbles added, I hope that doesn't make me motion sick, it usually does, and tracks IR support added, I'm curious to see if anyone will be able to do anything interesting with that. But there's kind of your uh, list of features, that is a lot of stuff. Like I said, it's not just, okay, we're 1.0-ing it, please send us money, you can make checks out to squad, blah blah blah, and blah blah blah, at blah blah blah. No, this is, this is actually more substantial... I'd say this is the most substantial update that I've seen. Okay, okay, granted, since the last update, better than ever and first contract introduced a lot of systems as well. But this is not the typical kind of thing that you see something go from beta out of early access. Because most times you have developers saying, okay, is everything fixed? Let's put it in the wild. This is going to introduce a lot of new systems. Hopefully not a lot of new bugs, but by the same token, 
it's going to be fun flying Kerbal Space Program just the same. There's a lot of new features that will hopefully make modding things even more streamlined. But it's a very exciting time to be playing Kerbal Space Program, whether you played it for a while and put it down, or maybe you're going to be picking it up for the first time. Like I said, there'll be more content on this channel. You can definitely check out some other channels as well. I always recommend Scott Manley. He's both entertaining and educational and way smarter than me, so he can actually explain why things are happening instead of that they're happening. But that's it for now. Thanks for watching. Feel free to uh, ask any questions or make any comments about features, and I'll be seeing you flying, hopefully not crashing and burning around the planet Carbon. See you next time.